Welcome back to the channel, everyone. In this video, my daughter heads to Elmina Castle. Um, if you do not know, it is a slave castle where slaves were kept before they were put on ships to be brought over for slavery. Being Jamaican, this is basically part of our history. These, these are our ancestors, and um, it was very touching for her to see and learn and experience. I hope it is for you as well. Please do not forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Have a good one. When I get it, I'll call you and confirm it for you, eh? My sister. Hello. Thank you. Okay, I'm here. Thank you. Okay, hello. Hello, madam. Hello, madam. Okay. I gave him the hundred cities because I thought it was. 
That's nothing. Oh, there you look. Oh. Yeah, it's just my dad's name. last name. The one. I'm zooming in. Does that mean somebody from your family was a king of here before? Or this area? Right? For my dad's life. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, whenever you go buy salt, I'm sure my mother would love that. Oh, wow. And it's the fact that she's just sitting there, she's not even going around. Right? As far back as 1471, the Portuguese started arriving here. As they came, they were trading with the lookout, and that was the barter trade, exchanging goods for goods. The Portuguese here were given the lookouts guns, gunpowder, tobacco, liquor, and other materials. And interestingly, our lookouts here were exchanged them with the gold ivories and other precious items. In fact, the gold was so much, and this gave the Portuguese a mindset that the whole land we have here is in abundance of gold. So they named the area Al Mina, and that means the gold mine. But this was corrupted or mispronounced to be El Mina, and that has come to stay. Now, at dinner, is another name for the town, Edina, but that is also a Portuguese word. 
the actual work is out there. And that means village in Portuguese language. It was also corrupted to be a dinner, and that has also come to stay. But you see, this should not tell us that Elmina never had a name at all before the Portuguese got here. Elmina's traditional name is Anomansa. Yeah, and I want us to pronounce it Anomansa. Anomansa. Uh -huh. It's a Ghanaian way. That means you saw Anomansa. Inexhaustible water. The more you drink, more is coming up. And this water we are talking about here, it is the lagoon just below the main bridge over there where we see the boats and the canoes. Now, when the battle trade was going on, the Portuguese needed a, uh, the Portuguese needed a permanent structure to keep their goods. So their leader by name Captain Don Diego de Azambuja. He contacted our king. Nana Kwanina and Sada first, mm. and he gave them that permission to build this castle. And in those times, all these rooms you see down here were store rooms or warehouses. In these warehouses, they kept their incoming goods, like the clothes, the mirrors, the schnapps, and the outgoing ones, like the gold and ivories. However, around the year 1503, that was in the early 16th century, when the slave trade started, all these warehouses you see down here were now converted to be slave dungeons. That's where they kept the enslaved Africans. And at a point in time, there were 1,000 of them here, 600 men and 400 women. Now, I want us to see how they were getting some of the captives into the dungeons. Now, the Europeans will capture some of them on their own, and this was false capture. For example, you may send your daughter to buy you something on the streets. By the time you realize she has been stolen and you don't know where she was. And some of the Europeans also had a collaboration with some of the Africans. These guys were slave readers. And this is what they do. Sometimes they can get to some village somewhere and set the village on fire. When guns and other dangerous weapons, they lay people ambush. So while people are running for their lives, we capture them, especially the women and the children. But if we are to know of the biggest way by which they got a lot of them here, then this was through the effects of inter-tribal wars. But in Ghana right now, there are many ethnic groups or tribes. But no matter our differences, we all see ourselves as one people. But in those times, that was not so. Because usually there were wars among the tribes. So, for example, if tribe A defeats tribe B, most of the tribe B people were captured. Most of these people who were brought here, they were victims of wars. Victims of wars. Now, there were also cases of tricks or deception. For example, a ship captain can tell a chief that we're having some party on the ship. So, the chief should bring some of his people from the palace on board the ship. Let's have some entertainment after the party get back to your palace. Now you will bring them and they get them heavily drunk and they sell them away. Deception. That also happened. Now, in the year 1637, the Dutch fought the Portuguese in this castle, defeated them and they took over the castle. 1637. And in the year 1872, the Dutch sold the castle to the British. That were no fights. The Portuguese lived in this castle for 155 years. The Dutch lived in this castle for 235 years. And the British were here for 85 years until the year 1957, when Ghana had their independence. And as we stand right now, Elmina Castle is 540 years old. Oh, wow. 540. And we are still counting. So this is a very brief history about Elmina Castle. Mm. Does someone have a contribution or a question? Is this the biggest castle? It's the oldest and largest in Africa. Oh, yeah. Yes. And in Ghana here, there are three castles. Elmina Castle first. There are the Christians Rock Castle in Osu Accra. Mm. Then the Castle. Yes. But so this is the oldest and largest. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, let's come again. 
Ah, now where we are, mm -hmm. this is the female slave courtyard. During the battle trip, these rooms you see down here, they were store rooms. They kept clothes, shelf, mirrors, and other items here. But when the slave trade started, this is where they put the enslaved African women. Mm -hmm. These are the female slave dungeons. Hello, so let's check this dungeon here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, what is it? Yes. Oh, I'll come the right oh, one. Yes. Relax, I love that. Well, <laughs> so, let me show you before we go. So, just be careful, please. Okay. Please, if you have a question, feel free to ask. Okay. Ah. Mm. This is Portuguese water reservoir. Mm. Please, do you see this pipe here? I can't see it. Okay. There's another black pipe over there. Mm. When the Portuguese were here, these pipes, they connected them along the roof. So anytime it was raining, mm. rainwater will pass through and enter here. Mm. So what we see here, it is not connected okay, to the sea. This is harvested okay. rainwater. Oh. Uh, some call it sweet water or fresh water. Mm -hmm. Now I was saying that in the year 1637, mm -hmm. the Dutch fought the Portuguese here and took over the castle. Mm -hmm. When the Dutch came here, they thought that the Portuguese had poisoned this water. The Dutch never used this water. They dug out their own water. And as you go, I will show you. And when the British also came, they dug out their own water. Mm. I'll show you. Okay. Thanks for the top part. Let's see, there's the female bandages here. Okay. My camera's oh, gonna die and I forgot to pick up another charger. Mm. Which one does this take, sir? This is the biggest female slave dungeon. Almost 150 enslaved African women were lying on this floor. Bare floor like this. When they were here, there were two containers here. They put one container at the corner there, and they keep another one at the last corner there. Now, this is what happens. If you want to go to the toilet, you get up and you reverse it. You want to vomit or urinate. You use those containers over there. But the challenge was when we look at the health troubles, it was so bad. Some of them were so weak and could not get up. They were to use those containers to ease themselves. So right now, the weak ones, they were practical. Going to toilet on this floor, mm -hmm. urinating on the floor, vomiting on the floor. And when they have their menses, they have all their menstrual cups scattered all over the floor, mixed up the toilet, vomiting and everything. And they were still sleeping there. And in fact, we can never, we can never imagine at all. Did you follow? I just have to reduce your voice to small for me, please. And in fact, we can never imagine at all that kind of heat and the bad smell that was coming from all sleep dungeons. And you see, Nigeria's home, our areas, if you don't need a place for like four days, when you're fifth time, you can't stand the smell. I can't imagine toilet, jewelry, Moment, my struggle, like, all mixed up together. Would well, the human being sleep in there? That was very, very terrible. Mm -hmm. Please, let's come in this. Now, right now, our focus is on this square hole. That hole we have here, that was one of their sources of air. Okay, 
You feel like, oh my god. Oh, it's, it's, it's a sad emotion. It's a sad yeah. smile. Yeah. It's a sad smile. Yeah. Oh, so we're trying to fake it. Mm-hmm. So, it, um, this way we have the egg. That was one of the uh, sources of egg. Apart from here, that egg came through and the other side. Because this middle area, those are kids, closing this middle area. Mm-hmm. Now, if the challenge was, this square hole we see was connected to this room. This is a magazine. They kept gunpowder and guns here. So any time there was a leakage, all the gunpowder toxic fumes will rush in here and pollute the air. Already, they were sleeping in their toilets, and the toxic fumes coming in, it made it worse. Many died. You pick your body up and dump it into the sea. Mm. So this reads brought to you by the map here were brought in by investors to pay respect to people who are gone. Biggest female slave dungeon. Wow. Please, let us see what I'm bringing outside. I'll give you time. Mm-hmm. Please, I'll bring you back. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, this is Portuguese water reservoir. These these black this black patch we have here. Mm-hmm. When the Portuguese were here, they were connected along the roof. So when it rains, you want to pass through and enter in. This is not connected to the sea. And it's have a step rain water. And then my friends, please stand here for me. I want to show you something. Okay. Please stand here for me. Let me show you that. Uh, please, the soul just here, the greatest gatherings, they were raping the women. Because back then, they don't come along with their own wives. In this castle, if a governor wants to sleep with a woman with his beer or wine, you come and stand up. You only have a look at it. Oh, my governor's balcony. He says how they introduced all this. The soldiers, they start opening all the gates for all the female captives to come and line up here. So while they were here, and he being up there, will now look through and choose the female captain wanted to sleep with. The selection, we draw water out here and clean them because for the number of months they were inside the dungeon, you cannot have that chance to brush your own teeth or take a bath. And in fact, some of the female classes who were chosen, they were menstruating, but still that was governor's choice. They make you meet and they take you to the governor's bedrooms. So you see where they pass, they will come back here again. Sorry. And uh, please, where we are, this is the primary access to the governor's bedroom. All the people sleep, and again, women who were chosen will pass here. And there is a secret door up there, it's a trap door. They pull it up. The woman walks up, enters the bedroom, and they close it. As you all go up, I will show you the secret door. After sleeping with them, they were all brought back into the dungeons, still as captives. In fact, because of the rape cases, some of the female captives got pregnant. And in their situation, they could not stay in the slave dungeons. The European merchants built stone houses outside the castle. They sent these pregnant ones there to give birth. And when they give birth and the child is four years, they bring the children back to the castle where they educate them. And in fact, in Ghana, in most of our formal education started with the castle schools before they were moved outside. And apart from this, in Africa here in general, sometimes you will see some of our brothers and sisters. If you look at the skin color, it's very light. That's a light colored skin of the mixed race children. And apart from this, there are some European names on the coastline. If you hear a name like Dihie, there is Van Dyke, Van Dapol, Da Costa, Da Silva, there is Broom, Vegana. We have Will Buffers. We've got Peterson, 
Hutchison, Johnson, Balanson, Robertson, and in fact, all the other six. Just a few months ago, I heard of another name, Appleton. And I learned that in Jamaica, Appleton. But you see, it was not all the female captives who were selected here who moved up to the bedroom. Some of them, no matter what you do to her, she will not step up here. And they were punished. Please, let's see that punishment. <laughs> Where's an Appleton estate in Jamaica? Mm -hmm. There's a one too. Mm -hmm. Please, there's a punishment. What do you have here is a cannon ball. Eight of these balls were here and they were chains here. These chains were fixed at the feet of the women who didn't go out. When you are here, no water to drink, no food to eat, rain or shine, day or night. They were here in chains. And this treatment was given to them so that others. And uh, please, we are observing, we are still at the female slave dungeons. We are observing this clothes and shoes here. This is what happened on July 2015. An exhibition was held in Elmina Castle, and the title was The Return of the Slaves. About 60 people from Ghana here, Nigeria, UK, USA, DR Congo, they came and selected from for 12 hours. From 6 in the evening to the following morning. They use this cloak to cover their waist and the chains for their arm and feet. In fact, people from many countries came down here to observe 12 hours in the slave dungeon, the return of the slaves. But please, these materials here, they are not original, just for the exhibition 2015. And they put kerosene in this and lit much for light during the program. But you see, during the slave return, some of the captives they were partially blind because mm. almost every time they were living in dark place. Mm. Mm. Now, there are some metals here. Please, these are the original iron bars. I think these bars were all here, but because of the rust, many are destroyed. So they have replaced them with these wooden really bars. These are the original iron bars. This is wood. This is wood. Mm. In the next three minutes, you can walk around the place, take a quick picture, then we continue. Okay. Mm -hmm. you missed one point. So anytime it was raining, rainwater would pass through and enter the water reservoir mm -hmm. that I showed you. But as you stand right now, they don't use the water reservoir. So they have done this. Anytime it is raining, rainwater will pass through and get outside the castle. Mm -hmm. Now when the ships arrived, all the enslaved African women, that is where they passed. Think this is the female slave exit. But in those times, all these iron rods you see here, they were not there. They have fixed them here to avoid accidents. Mm. Female slave exit. Please, let's come. We go there, but we pass through a different place. Mm. Please, let's come. Really? Really? And those red, red bricks from Portugal. In those times, these bricks. They put them in their ships to serve as a ballast. It gave the ships extra weight for stability, balance on the sea. But when they come down here, that is what they use to raise up the structure. Now, when they are leaving, they take the gold, the captives, and the other precious items as weight for balance when they are leaving. Now, the structure we see at the center here, that is the Portuguese chapel, first Roman Catholic church in this country. 
and you see in the whole world every chapel has a symbol there was a Catholic tower on top of the church when the Dutch got here they were not Catholics the Dutch took away the Catholic tower and they divided the chapel into two they used the upper hall as junior soldiers mess soldiers were eating and drinking up there and they used the hall below as a marketplace that was where they were buying and selling the captives when the British came in here, they converted the two halls to be classrooms for their policemen who were trained in this castle. But as it stays right now, that is a museum. And after the tour, you visit the museum. Please, during the battle trip, all of the rooms at the ground floor here were store rooms. They kept clothes, snap mirrors, and all items here. But when the slave trade started, that's where they put the enslaved African men. These are the male slave dungeons. Another description here, the male slave dungeon. On this first floor were rooms for soldiers, traders and missionaries. First floor. Please, second floor there for deputy governor and the last one there for the governor. So over here your position will tell you where you have to stay, the higher you are. See that first case structure there? Now the same structure there, they are watched out watch towers done by the Dutch. The Dutch put soldiers on top of them to watch over the castle for security. But when the British came in here, they converted to prison. They kept a popular Asante king by name Nana Prepper the First. And in the other prison, they kept a popular Asante queen mother by name Ja Asantoa. Now queen mother Ya Asantoa, when she was 60 years old, she led a war against the British for the protection of the Asante Kingdom Golden Stool. This Golden Stool is believed to be the soul of the Asante Kingdom. The British wanted to take it away from them, but she stood and fought them. She was captured and brought in for almost a year. All of them were now taken into exile in Seychelles Island. But later, mm. Nana Prega was brought back to Ghana and made a king again. But for the Queen Mother, she died in Seychelles. Her body was brought back to Ghana and buried in Ejiso, in the Asante region of Ghana. So that is Nana Prentice Hall and Queen Mother Ya Asante's Hall. Please, this wall here with the metal on top, we have the same wall here, and some of them are around the castle. They are supporting walls added by the Dutch to support the walls for strengthening. And the metal on top. In the year 1948, the British were here. They used this castle as a police training school. So every day, their policemen will run through the metal. They go up and they come down. They go up and they come down for exercise of the Muslims. And maybe at the end of the tour, you can also give a try of the exercise. Mm -hmm. All right, please, let's come down here. Mind your steps, please. My phone's already dying. Mm -hmm. Already dying, yeah. Okay. But Please. think about the time we finish. Um, this is an epitaph. Epitaph written in old Dutch language. So remember this Dutch governor, my name Governor Van Tech. This man was from Zeeland, a province in Holland. Governor Tech. He was the last director general of the Dutch West Indies Company. This governor arrived here on 16 January 1758 and he died on 12 March, only three months. January to March 1758. Ted died at the age of 41, died of malaria. They buried Ted here. Malaria. But you see, while he was here as a governor, there was a Dutch priest or pastor here by name A. Andresi from Fieri, a village in Zeeland, in Holland. He wrote this short tribute for Governor Tex. He was describing this man as very honest and God fearing. And it is only the priest, A. Andresi, who can explain to us why Tex was God fearing. When we look at the troubles of the captives in the slave dungeons, Governor Tex, God fearing. Hmm. Please, let's come in here. He feared God for real. Listen, he doesn't understand how he's got 
Yeah. That's the description you see here. This serves as a mission statement of the store. As you walk through the slave dungeons, that should be in the everlasting memory of the anguish of our ancestors. In that, may those who died rest in peace. May those who return find their roots. Amen. Humanity never again go be traitor to injustice against humanity. And with the living, about to uphold this mission statement of the talk. Now we are going to see the differences between these two cells. First, we all enter the cell. Please enter. Anybody who was brought here died. He mm -hmm. died because of heat, no water, no food. By three days, you are gone. They pick your body up and dump you into the sea. Mm -hmm. These rich flowers here were brought into their respect. Condemn cell. Please, let's get outside. Mm -hmm. Is that garbage? Let's put my gun out. Many go sleep or leave that they could walk through the door very easily. Okay, as 
you work out, you mind your head. Let me set up my back towards this way. Yes. Oh, wow. Give it to These are the remains of the Trees. The depots are moats. Hello, that is outer moats. Inner moats. Outer moats, inner moats. All of sea water. Please look at your left. The wooden bridge with the chain at your left. They said the rock bridge. The wooden is up. Nobody can enter. But they put up water everywhere. And the security against out and attacks. And the square diagram in front of the castle, the square diagram is a navigational compass for directions. The same diagram was used to calculate time. Put a pole at the middle, a shadow that was cast on the diagram during the time of the day was used to tell time. And it becomes a sundial. Sundial. Please, the building up here is false in the chart. False in the chart. So just inside. Church. Well, he's talking about the church, the Portuguese church. Oh, probably you in the bathroom. Yeah, he's talking about the Portuguese church. I beg of you, you see how broken it is? Don't get too close. Because you like adventuring, you can do too much for me. Door of no return, they just down here. Please look at your right, where we have the rocks. Mm -hmm. Just after the rock, we have these two cement pillars. Mm -hmm. You see, just after the rocks, mm -hmm. one and two. Mm -hmm. yeah, they are the remains of the wharf. That was where bigger ships were anchored. Oh. So smaller boats, you see the captains from the door of no return down here. The Vegas. And of the Cape Coast Castle is at the very tip of the sea. At the tip, 
and because of the weather, you can't see it well, but it's at the very tip. Mm -hmm. Right now, they are doing a fishing hub. They are doing a fishing hub over there. Okay, we continue up here. You do a lot of things. <laughs> Every fish. <laughs> They put electricity in here. There has to. The two rooms here is governor's kitchen for only one person. Governor's kitchen, one person. To sign us up, you can't get a picture. This is governor's balcony. If the governor wants to speak with the woman, this is what I'm going to stand. Give a command. Open all the gates for the woman. Yeah, yeah. And he chooses. The one who is to read. Governor, Okay. Just stay there for me. This is the secret door for the shop door. The woman who was selected will pass through here and enter governor's bedroom. The trap door. Please, these are the living rooms for governor. This is governor's washroom. <coughs> now let's check the side also. Oh, 
And of course, the biggest and nicest drones are. Oh, wow, happy anniversary. Wow. <laughs> this was a classroom. Oh. Yes. Oh.